Welcome to Contemplate, a Bible teaching ministry of Pastor David Robinson and brought to you by Acts Church in Vancouver, Washington. We're studying in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12, where Jesus says, We will be blessed when we're persecuted. Sounds crazy, but it's true. Here's Pastor David with more. Regardless of whether you agree with me or not, make no mistake, I believe the Bible is true. I believe that it's true. I believe it's the Word of God. I believe Jesus Christ died for our sin and that the only way, the only way to be reconciled to God is through Jesus Christ, period. That's what I believe. And I know that although the evidence is convincing, and I have spent some time, I may not be the smartest person in the world, but I've spent some real time thinking through these issues and the evidence is convincing, and my experience of Jesus Christ, my relationship with him, is convincing, even though that I know some people will, based on that profession of my faith, insult my motives, insult my intelligence, insult whatever, as a result of me saying that I believe in Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, I said persecution is not just being killed, being sent to prison, right? Having your church burned down. It is also, there's this word revile here. And it's an interesting word. We probably don't use that a lot, um, the word revile. But there, I went to Microsoft Word, and I, and I just used the synonyms thing. These are the synonyms, the words that basically mean the same thing as revile that came up. Insult, abuse, scorn, condemn, censure, despise, berate, or disparage. That means persecution is not just being imprisoned or killed. It means that sometimes people just won't like you. Sometimes people will insult you. Sometimes people will reject you, not invite you to their parties, not hire you. If you're a believer who expresses belief in Scripture as the Word of God, if you're a believer who's serious about that and you try to get a job as a college professor at a major, at a major university or a state school, good luck. Or try to get tenure at that school, good luck. Those days are passing away when, when Christ followers who are serious about their faith can get hired at those, in those kinds of jobs. And more and more of that will continue to happen. Okay? People may not hire you. People may make false accusations against you. People may sue you. All of this is persecution. And it is the kind of persecution that you will increasingly face. And there are two kinds of reactions for, for Christ followers to persecution that I've seen. There may be more, but there's two that I'm going to talk about. One is the reaction of the fully devoted follower of Christ. And one is the reaction of the tamed Christian. The tamed Christian. One of the things that tamed Christians do is that they avoid persecution by compromising the truth. Compromising what Scripture says. Compromising what their faith in Christ means. And one of the things that fully devoted followers of Christ do is they stand strong under persecution in the power of the Holy Spirit, and they continue to speak the truth in love. The kingdom is right side up, the kingdom of God. The world and the culture are upside down. If you are fitting in really well with all the people in the culture, you are not living right side up. That's just a fact. It's the way it is. There's a really easy way to know whether you are a fully devoted follower of Christ or living like a fully devoted follower of Christ, or whether you're living like a tamed Christian. Ready? You're going to ask yourself this question, or these questions. How well do I fit in with the world? How well do I fit in with the world? How well do I fit in with the culture? How well do I fit in with those who do not follow Christ? Do I fit in well with them? If so, you might be a tamed Christian. Do you notice in this passage of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he, he actually goes from talking about those Blessed are those who are to talking about you. I don't know if you noticed that, but let's, let's go to verse 11 again. It says, blessed are you, right? And there's two words that are super important. And we're going to see them over and over in the Sermon on the Mount. And, and every time we see them, they, they've got to trigger something for you. But I'm going to read this to see if we can pick them out. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. The two words are you You, when, okay? Blessed are you when they persecute you. Not, blessed are you 
if they persecute you. So he's gone from just talking about those who do this and those who do that to going, I'm, coming, I'm talking to my disciples right now. I'm talking to you, and I'm telling you, this is what is going to happen when they persecute. Not if they happen to persecute you, then you're blessed. When they persecute you. John 15, 18 through 20 says this. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 13. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and Iconium at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now listen very carefully to this sentence. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So not only will Christ's followers definitely suffer persecution, but... As a bonus, evil men and imposters will go worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, Paul, this was a long time ago for Paul, and, and now we see that the Christians were a relatively small group back then. They were growing and growing. Now they've grown quite large, and we have persecution for at least serious persecution for 245 million believers. But this says that every believer, every fully devoted follower of Christ will suffer persecution. And it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse until he returns. And we hope he comes quickly. Charles Spurgeon, a very famous pastor from England in the 1800s, I think he was called the Prince of Preachers, he said this, Christian, expect trouble. Make it a wonder if you get through a day easily. If you remain a week without persecution, think it a remarkable thing. And if you should, perchance, live a month without heaving a sigh from your inmost heart, think it a miracle of miracles. If you fit in the world, you are not living the, light, the righteous life of a disciple and follower of Jesus Christ. I know that for so many of us, that is difficult because the idea of trying to fit in, trying to avoid rejection, trying to avoid persecution, and wanting to be liked is so important to so many of us. And do you know why it is? Because we're not sociopaths. Everybody wants to be liked. You should. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to want to be liked, to want to be in good relationships. Those are normal and good things. That's why persecution is persecution and not fun. All right? That's why there is reward for persecution. If being rejected and persecuted was fun, I don't think there'd be a reward for it. Nowhere in here does it say, blessed are those who eat a lot of ice cream. Right? Great is their reward. Because ice cream is its own reward. Am I right? We don't need a reward for ice cream. It's already fun. Persecution is not. Because we do want to fit in. We do want to have good relations. We do want people to like us. We want to like other people. We want to have that going on. And what, what Christ is saying here is, unfortunately, if you're going to be a Christ follower, not everybody's going to like you. You're not always going to fit in. But your reward is great for suffering that. Now, most of us... We would stand up for our mother or our father or our spouse or our children, sisters or brothers or our friends, right? We would stand up for them, even if it meant standing under persecution. We would stand up for those people. How much more so should we be standing strong for our loving creator, our God who gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life? How much more? Should we stand for Christ, who has shown us his love more than anyone has ever shown love in dying for us when he was perfect for our sins? We've got to be able to face it. We know that there are lots of people who will reject us or think less of us because we follow Christ. Plenty of people, but we cannot become tamed Christians. We know that real Christ falling will get us persecuted, but we can't let that make us become tamed Christians. Cannot happen. 
Cannot happen. If we become tame Christians, we are, we are going to end up compromising the truth because of fear. Fear of persecution. And we will trade our temporary comfort, not having to deal with persecution, for someone else's eternal hope. And that's not okay. Because here's the deal. Every person that you know, every single person you have ever met, everyone you know, their only hope is Jesus Christ. You compromise the gospel, you compromise the scripture, you compromise truth. I don't know what to tell you, but I can tell you this. It is not leading that person towards Jesus Christ. And he's their only hope. He's their only hope. You guys know that you have a smell. You have a smell. You have a smell. Um, listen to what 2 Corinthians 2, 15 through 16 says. The Holy Spirit reveals this to us. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death. Those are those who are perishing. And to the other, those who are saved, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? A fully devoted Christ follower has a smell. She smells like Jesus. He smells like Jesus. It smells like life to those who love Jesus, and it smells like death to those who reject Jesus. That's what it is. Now, is that true for you? How is it for you? Do you have the reaction that for some people, they think that you smell like death? But when you're around your friends, when you're around your family, is there tension? Those that don't follow Christ, those that reject Christ, is there a tension? Are you, as a follower of Christ, as his disciple, is there a tension from, from you being there? Not because you're being a jerk, not because you're being difficult, but just because you smell like Jesus. When you, when you run into other believers, is there a happiness, is there a joy that comes because you smell like life to them? Or do you do what some people do? Because what some people do is they try to shower off the Jesus fragrance when they go to work. Or they try to shower off the Jesus fragrance when they go to hang out with their friends. If you do that, you are not living the life of a fully devoted Christ follower. You're just not. Other people kind of do the opposite thing. They try to spray on the Jesus cologne when they come to church. Oh, we're going to church. All the way here. And then they get out of the car and they're like, hey, Jesus cologne. But it ain't there at any other time. They put it on when they go see grandma or their mom. In both cases, you're just a hypocrite. Just a hypocrite. And you're not fooling anyone. And let me just tell you, because I know, because I've been a hypocrite. I know what it's like to shower off Jesus or throw the Jesus cologne on, depending on the situation. I don't ever want to be a hypocrite like that again. What a waste. What a waste. But here's the fact. If no one thinks you smell like life or death... You don't smell like Jesus. You're not the fragrance of Jesus if no one's reacting. So you got to ask yourself, do you smell like Jesus? Do I smell like Jesus? The truth is that a life of compromise and hypocrisy is a waste. It's a waste of the adventure that God has set out for you. Be all in or be all out. Fully devoted. The tame Christian, the lukewarm, no good. No bueno. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And we're saved into real life. Real life. The life of a fully devoted Christ follower will have persecution. But it also has real love. I know we all, not all, mostly the ladies, like to watch you know, The Notebook or whatever movie, right? And there's some love story. And it's, oh, and the rain and they uh, run into each other in slow motion, the kissing and whatever. And we're like, oh, that's, that's the real thing. It's the real thing. Now, there's a reason why your heart leaps at that, okay? Because you really do desire real love. But let me tell you where you won't find it. You won't find it in the world. You won't find it. Those movies are fake. There's cameras there. Those people don't love each other. It's like a table over on the side with sandwiches. There's a director like, God, right? Turn the rain machine off. It's not real. You want it to be real for you? You've got to live in Christ because that's where real love is. Whether it's the romantic love you have with your spouse or the love you have with your friends, but most importantly, the love you have with Jesus Christ that's real and powerful. Real hope, real peace, real excitement, real adventure, real life. 
That's what the Christ follower has. And yes, there's some persecution, but it's well worth it. Now, if you don't know Jesus, if you're not the follower of Jesus Christ, if you're not confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, if you have not chosen to be a fully devoted follower of Christ, let, let me tell you something. For thousands of years, 2,000 years now, there have been many, many billions of fully devoted followers of Christ, people who love Jesus Christ. Well, we don't know how many, but a lot. And many, many of them, including 4,000-something last year, have found such an amazing and full and hopeful and awesome life in Jesus Christ that they did not count their own physical life too much to give up. They did not count their own physical life too much to give up for the joy of knowing and walking with Jesus. That's how powerful life in Christ is. That the persecution at the end of the day, it may hurt, but it's nothing in comparison to knowing and loving and being in love with Jesus Christ. Nothing in comparison. And for every one of those people and for every believer in Jesus Christ, all things will work together for good. If we have an eternal view, we need to have an eternal view about that because all things will work together for good. Persecution is nothing compared to knowing Jesus Christ and finding life in him. Yeah, yes, you will suffer persecution. I want you to know that because that's what scripture tells us. But also, and maybe much more so, you will find joy and peace and faith and love in Jesus. I love Jesus because he loved me first. And I was rotten, but for him, but for his grace. And I have seen Jesus be faithful to me and my family for many, many years. I'm not saying everything's gone well. I can tell you right now it hasn't. It hasn't always been good, but I can tell you this, God has been faithful to me. I'm not just talking about like financial or comfort or something like that. I'm just talking about at the level of spirit, at the level of life, he has been faithful to me, helping me to believe the long-term, the eternal. Now, here's the thing. Jesus Christ loves you too. Just like he loves me, he loves you too so much that he gave up his own life for you. He was murdered on a cross when he was perfect. He was God. He is God. He's murdered on a cross that you might have life in him. And then he rose from the dead defeating death and hell and sin and proving through his resurrection from the dead that he's God and that he is powerful enough to save you. You can trust the one who rose from the dead. No matter what you have done, no matter what your story is, when you've come in here today or you listen online or whatever, no matter where you come from, no matter what you've done, no matter how, how dark you think it is, Jesus Christ can save you. And being saved by Jesus Christ makes any persecution look like a small thing. Most of us, when we first found Christ, we would have said, I go to the ends of the earth. I take whatever persecution came because I'm so joyful to have Christ. Let's make sure that we don't, over time, lose that and become tamed Christians who would compromise the one who we love, the one who loves us for comfort, who would compromise it so we can make sure that everybody likes us, so that we don't have to deal with rejection. No. Stand strong under persecution and the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do this ourselves. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, but stand strong under the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't know Jesus, come to know him. Today's the day for you. Don't wait. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised five seconds from now. Don't wait. You got one life to live in the most important decision, the decision of your life. Do you accept Jesus or do you reject him? That really is the only thing that matters, and it's the most important choice you'll ever make. And if you're ready, right now, simply tell Jesus that you believe he's the Son of God, that he died for you, ask him to forgive your sins and be your Lord and Savior, and he will. And if you have any questions or need help figuring all this out, call us at 360-885-9000. We'd love to help you find life. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you'll be right here next time for more with Pastor David Robinson here on Contemplate. Contemplate.